There are multiple studies uh, trying to answer the question uh, whether uh, centrovenous uh, pressure predicts fluid responsiveness. And in fact, uh, those studies are uh, showing that there is no good correlation between centrovenous pressure uh, measurements and volume status of the patient. And I'm going to explain uh, why there is no correlation, why the centrovenous pressure is not a good uh, uh, indicator of volume status. And this is simply related to the fact that when we are using pressure, we're using it as a surrogate for the volume status. However, there's a third component that needs to be taken into consideration, which is the compliance of the uh, ventricle. So the pressure is the change in the volume divided by the compliance. And without knowing the compliance, the pressure may not uh, estimate the end diastolic uh, volume. And take a look on this uh, three graphs here, where we have a decreased compliance in the first one, a normal compliance in the second one, and an increased compliance in the third one. So if you measure a pressure here of 10, that pressure would be indicating a low end diastolic uh, volume in the patient uh, with decreased compliance. It would be normal in the patient with a normal compliance, and it would uh, indicate the same pressure would be uh, a, uh, an indication of high end diastolic uh, volume in the patient with the increased uh, compliance. So without knowing the compliance, it would be difficult to utilize the pressure to estimate the end diastolic volume. And the second explanation uh, for this poor correlation uh, is uh, based on the concept of transmural pressure. When we put a catheter uh, inside the uh, central uh, vein, we measure the uh, pressure inside the vessel or intraluminal pressure. In fact, without knowing the pressure surrounding the structure, it would be difficult to estimate what is the real pressure inside the vessel that is actually correlating with the volume status of the patient. Uh, so the transmural pressure is the difference between the uh, uh, intraluminal pressure minus surrounding pressure. It is similar to transpulmonary pressure, but here we are applying it on the vessels. So let's take a look on these two patients who have uh, CVP of uh, 20, and the clinical uh, decision for, uh, uh, for these two patients uh, is to give diuretics since the CVP is elevated. Uh, however, this uh, pressure is only a measurement of intraluminal pressure. If we measure the surrounding pressure in the first patient here and uh, find out that uh, uh, the pressure is zero, then we have a transmural pressure of intraluminal pressure minus the surrounding pressure. That will give us a transmural pressure of 20 minus zero is 20. At that time, you would give this patient uh, a diuretic. On the other patient here, the uh, transmural pressure is the intraluminal pressure minus the surrounding pressure. So if the surrounding pressure was 18 centimeter of water, then the transmural pressure would be 20 minus 18 is two centimeter of water, and you end up giving this patient fluid. So without knowing the transmural pressure, it would be very difficult to utilize the CVB as an indicator of volume status. At the same time, without knowing the compliance of the right ventricle, it would be very difficult uh, to estimate uh, the volume from measuring a pressure only. Uh, we uh, stopped using central venous pressure in our practice, and we use other dynamic measures in determination of fluid status for the patient.